Hello everybody, this is Sheldon from Shell Rock Art. Welcome to my channel. Um, I had a couple of weeks off and not off work, but off from pouring um, my back um, work. Um, the catering business had been super crazy, very busy, and I had literally no time to myself to do much of anything. And I'm really grateful for all the support of those who are also on this um, perspectives and pouring um, collaboration with me, um, Britta and um, Lance. And so thank you guys for your support during the time that I was in my absence. So this week we have a nice surprise because we have um, the color art lady herself, um, the CEO, Leslie Olmstead, and she's going to be kicking us off today. So, but what I'm going to be doing is a, I'll show you. I'm going to be doing this piece here. It dried pretty nicely. So I'm gonna demonstrate this one, but I, this was a Fiona Art inspired flower dip. And I don't have the products that she uses, but my whole goal was to try to get these pretty little cells to pop up around the edges of my dip, and I was able to do so. Um, my first, um, this try was my best try so far. I haven't done one of these in a while. When I tried the first time, uh, my products weren't as great as I like them to be. But now that I've been pouring for a while and everything, and I've tested out different products, I like the way this one turned out. So I'm gonna be doing more of these. This was my second try. My first try was this one, but I'm gonna show you the video of the second try that I like. This one got a little bit scrunched up up here. It's still already here, so it's a little bit imperfect, but that only happened because of um, the way I was able to not keep the um, napkin centered when I was pulling it up. So that's what happened in here. But the other one's a better piece, I think. But I just wanted to show you both of them. Viola, voila, however you want to call it. But they dried very nicely. So I'm going to get you to the canvas. And welcome again to Perspectives and Pouring. And following me will be either Lance or Britta. Or I don't really know at this particular juncture as to what the exact lineup is. However, when I have this video posted, it will be down in the comments as to what the lineup description box, I'm sorry, not comments, but what the actual lineup is will be down in the description box. So please like, share, and subscribe, and always continue to want to join us because we're going to be trying all kinds of techniques and different ways we can have different perspectives in acrylic pouring. So let's get over to the canvas. Hello everybody, this is Sheldon from Shell Rock Art with another perspective in paint pouring. Um, this one is gonna be another flower dip. I tried one before and it turned out great, but it just wasn't, wasn't quite centered enough, but I still like it. It's kind of um, different different from my usual, but I've seen uh, Fiona from Fiona Art do it, and I just said I had to try it myself. So that's what I'm going to do this time, and I hopefully by watching her video, I paid more than the usual attention. Um, the base coat, I want to be a little bit thinner than the other ones, but um, just a little bit. Or well, at least the same consistency. I know I said thinner, but I meant thinner than how I have it now. I think the other consistencies are right there on point. I just had to test my base coat, which is um, Amsterdam ox Oxide Black. And I think I'm right there. So what I'm gonna do, and I think part of my other problem was that 
I got a square, even though it's a rectangular piece, um, I had to cut it into a square in order for me to pull the corners up properly. Because if you don't pull the corners up properly, you're not going to get a nice flower. I will let you know that now. <laughs> so I got Mr. Handy Dandy with me. So let me go back over the colors. Um, I'll go from the other way. Titanium white. Um, this is Amsterdam. Uh, this was blue, but I darkened it up on this one with a little bit of the ultramarine blue. There's no silicone in these paints. This is a mixture of Amsterdam pouring medium, glue, and water. There's no Floetrol either. This is uh, Cobalt Aqua from the Vivid Intense set from Color Art. This is um, Azo Gold, Nickel Azo Gold from the same Vivid Intense set from Color Art. And this is permanent, uh, permanent red violet from Amsterdam. So I'm going to use these colors. So I'll decide how the order is going to be as I'm laying them down. I'm going to be pouring over top of this little doohickey. Even though I don't know the spelling of the word doohickey, but I'm going to pouring over this to make my flower. Okay. So let me get started. By putting the base coat down first, get my paper towel out the way. And let's kind of go a little square like this. And go around. Handy Dandy's going to spread that out anyway. I learned that you don't want too much color on the surface. I think that's what kind of um, affects how your um, how your colors pull off. If you have too much color on the sorry on the canvas, if you have too thick of a coat of a base coat, so. Let me try not to have too thick of a base coat this time. The last time I think my coat was just way too thick. And it affected how the paper towel pulled the color off. I think the less coat you have as a base, the less sticks to the paper towel and the less comes up and the more color stays down. Does that make sense? I hope so. It doesn't really make too much sense to me, but I think that's how it works. Who knows? I just know that when I pulled up on it, on my paper towel, it just seemed like it was just pulling up so much more paint than I wanted. So I think there might be some kind of validity to that theory. But again, it's just a theory. We don't know until we actually do it. So, I'm spreading this around nice and evenly. Um, and then, what I know I saw Fiona do was she, um, let me clean off handy dandy. Um, what I saw that she did was she tilted the canvas a little bit to get some of the paint a little bit thinner as well. I'm not going to tilt. I'm going to spin and see if I can get some of that off a little bit flatter. Okay, so hopefully that is enough to lower my surface level of paint. We'll see how that works out. Let me torch it for a second. Get some of these bubbles out. Okay. 
And I gotta put some new uh, butane in this torch. <laughs> okay, so let's put some, put this boy in the center. I hope I find the center. Guesstimating a center is not easy. Think of me. Okay, let's call that the center. All right. I want to save some of that for my final torching. All right, so let's get started on some of these colors. That ought to make a decent flower. Looks a little bit centered. So instead of soaking my towel, I'm gonna do like Fiona and spray it a little bit. Soften it up. Paying attention to detail is very important when you're doing this kind of art. Okay. And it softens up the paper towel so when you lay it down, you can lay it down nice and even. 
like so. So now let me kind of give it a little bit of a pat down. Very slight, nothing to mash it, just to make sure everything is touching. Okay, here goes nothing. Now it's more square. I have no excuse this time, right? Wrong. So one corner up, and I'm gonna work my corners around in succession. So this corner here, and then this corner up to here, and then this corner up to here. Then I take this side corner and do the same thing up, 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 and come on, up. Now let's lift straight up. All right. It's better. The thicker consistency of the paint did make somewhat of a difference. Let me get those colors back out over those corners that the paper towel lifted up. Mm -hmm. Get handy dandy to kind of smooth that out a little bit so that it could go over the sides. Make sure everything is covered. Now for torching, so that this um, pole is a practice. It really is. Pulling that paper towel up is a practice and a half. Let me put you more centered. I think you're centered or not. So let's slowly turn you around. Nope. I think I gotta push you more that way, I think. It never was centered, but hey, let's see if I can tilt it back this way. Let's see if I can get motion. Nope, I'm not gonna mess with that motion in the middle. Let me pull you back because that middle almost got a little functified. Off center. Ah. I don't like the fact that it's off center, but I do like the way that it turned out. Great colors, great composition, beautiful cells, nice lacing, no, no Floetrol, no silicone, get my corners, make sure they're nice and covered. And I would not say I'm as good as Fiona. I would never say that. 
but I actually feel good about this one. But I really understand when she says that uh, centering is a challenge. She's not lying. Centering is a challenge. Of course, I would have loved it if it was centered, but not everything is going to be perfect, right? Let me pop this baby, and I will get you down for a closer look. There you go, folks. Here's a flyover of how these colors worked out. Not as good as Fiona, but I'll tell you, I like the way this is. Fiona's like the grand wizard of these flowers. And I wish I could be like her, but you know what? I got to be a better me. And this is a better me considering what I've done when I first started playing around with uh, acrylic paints. So I'm very happy with this. And this is another perspective in pouring. So up next will be Britta Clayton from Britt Clayton Designs, I think. Well, anyway, I think we have um, Leslie as part of the lineup. Leslie Onstad from Color Art. But we shall see where she is in the lineup. But until then, happy pouring and goodbye.